Well, I think that, you know, there, there are two different sides of that, one of which is there were two different sides of what H.P. Lovecraft did. There was the poetical, through the gates of dreamland, you know, quest for the silver key, Randolph Cartery, Dunsany-ish, Cats in Althar kind of stuff. And then there was the much, much harder, harder edged at the Mountains of Madness, all of that stuff. Um, and I can see Gene and other people seeing both edges of that. The joy of Lovecraft is the things that he is describing are fundamentally indescribable. We may have sort of this universal agreement, kind of, for what Cthulhu sort of looks like now, because lots of people like drawing Cthulhu, and there's become this sort of cultural meme of, okay, you know, good-looking guy, wings, head kind of, you know, octopus head, tentacles where the mouth should be. It's not the kind of thing that would drive you to madness merely to see it. Whereas I always like to think that maybe if you looked up and saw Cthulhu, your sanity is not going to last beyond that. Um, any of these Lovecraftian ghoulies and, and things should be indescribable. And I suppose that's why in comics I never actually really wanted to get into that territory. Because I don't want ever, don't ever want to try and make somebody draw a Shoggoth. Because the moment somebody's drawn a Shoggoth, it's like, oh, well, that's what it looks like. I thought it would be weirder than that. Lovecraft is never going to go out of my stories, and I very much hope he never does. You know, I think there's still, there's still underlying that Lovecraft sensibility, if you like. And to be honest, I, every so often I try and do what I like most about him, which is that sense of cosmic awe and terror. Because I was able to subsume into what I do, um, what I admire most about Lovecraft, that, that, that's a way of, of building on, on, on what I see as his achievement. And I think, you know, many other writers have done it, and the best of them, it seems to me, you don't immediately point out and say, well, that's Lovecraft imitation. But when you look closely, there clearly are, are traces of, of his influence, very profound influence. I shall never permit anything bearing my signature to be banalized and vulgarized into the flat, infantile twaddle which passes for horror tales amongst radio and cinema audiences. can imagine in the future there may be imaging devices that will project directly into the minds, reach many more people than even Lovecraft's stories can. It's weird. It's the seventh year, ninth festival. We did one in Salem, Massachusetts. We were, we were invited out, and uh, then we got invited up to Vancouver, BC. And uh, people have been asking me to do it in Chicago and LA, but it's like, uh, I have a day job. And, and this, one, this one's going to come off a little... Rough, but we'll see. The first one was in 1996, um, and it was just a random firing of neurons. That so I put up some reviews of the more accessible movies like Reanimator and From Beyond, etc. And I started getting emails from people around the country. Uh, do you know what Bur um, Lovecraft's favorite film was? Did you watch the trivia? <laughs> was it Armageddon? <laughs> <laughs> Two of these individuals, one was John Streisick, who was a staff director at Tales of the Dark Side, and the other was Aaron Vanek. They both had two really good shorts, and I had never seen an amateur Lovecraft shirt, and I was just like really jazzed. <laughs> thinking of what film can I put in and, and uh, do here. So, you know, I love doing it. And I've started to hear people saying, yeah, I saw your film, Aaron, I love it. Now I want to do it. And I'm like, oh, geez, you know, I'm spawning people doing other stuff, which is great, actually, because I love Lovecraft in the film so much that I love seeing other people's films. The first one I did um, was called Nyarlathotep, um, and it was based on one of Lovecraft's earliest stories. Um, 
I guess it's about 15 minutes long, and I play the, the main character who witnesses sort of the coming of the apocalypse in the form of this god called Nyarlathotep who comes out of Egypt. It was in the hot autumn that I went with the restless crowds through the night and up the endless stairs into the choking room to see Nyarlathotep. He greeted us, saying he had risen up out of the blackness of 27 centuries. But there's just something about Lovecraft. Like, I figure I spent two years doing a 15-minute film based on a four-page story. So clearly there's something more than just, you know, a slight interest. The uh, relevance of Lovecraft's stories and film. And, and how good is it, or easy to adapt? <clears throat> well, um, thanks to Mr. Joshi, I, I discovered that Lovecraft hated most horror films. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was in one of his letters, he talks about going to see a, a, a screening of Dracula, Todd Browning's Dracula, and thinking that it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. <laughs> um, so I, I'm certain that if he were around today, that he would not think very highly of any of the work that I have done. <laughs> I think Lovecraft is peculiarly ill-fitted both to comics and to movies. And I'm, you know, there are good movies out there. They're, you know, Herbert West reanimated. You'll never get credit for my discovery. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job in a sideshow. I wonder why an intelligent young man like yourself should make such a foolish, fatal mistake of coming here to challenge me. Oh, I have a plan. In a way, I think someone like Stuart Gordon get, gets closer. What he gets closer to, I think, in, in something like Dagon, and particularly in Reanimator, is, is to that very, very black, outrageous humour that you can find in Lovecraft more often than is often acknowledged. I mean, you know, Herbert West Reanimator is, it seems to me, a, a series of very black jokes, where, where the punchline is usually, damn it, it wasn't quite fresh enough yet again. Um, and, and the film certainly obviously goes much further than Lovecraft ever would, and I'm sure Lovecraft would have been outraged and embarrassed by some of it. I mean, it's uh, damn tight too sexy for him for a star. But nevertheless, I still think, you know, it's, it's not by any means entirely untrue to Lovecraft. Thank you so much for starting Reanimator from beyond Dagon. Thank you very much. I first came to the um, Lovecraft Film Festival about four years ago, and uh, I was amazed because, um, you know, I thought I knew something about Lovecraft, but I found that I was, an, you know, a complete, you know, ignoramus compared to the, the folks who come to this festival. You know, they really know Lovecraft well, and um, I learned a tremendous amount about Lovecraft coming here, and also, you know, the the seriousness in which the people who saw my movies approached him, and. Uh, you know, I kept it in mind when I worked on Dagon, which was my next Lovecraft film. And um, now it's, I'm very honored to have received this, the, the Howie Award, it's called, which, um, you know, uh, is a response to, to the work that I've been doing, you know, the Lovecraft uh, material. And, um, you know, I'm very, very, you know, overwhelmed by all of this. It's, it, it was a great honor. I want to say one more thing about this, which is... Um, that it would be wonderful if they would build a full-size statue like this to Lovecraft in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, you know, many years ago I was in Providence and um, we were looking for locations for the Shadow over Innsmouth. And um, they took me around, gave us a little sort of Lovecraft tour and showed me the house that he lived in and so forth. And I noticed that there was no plaque on the house. There was nothing that really stated that Lovecraft had ever, had ever lived there. So um, it would sure be great if they would uh, 
you know, build this statue and, and, and maybe put it in front of Lovecraft's house. What I think is the saddest thing about Lovecraft was that, you know, he is not around to see the, you know, the success that, you know, he's finally achieved. You know, that, uh, you know, during his lifetime he was writing these stories and very few people really, you know, were even aware of his work. And if it weren't for, you know, his friends, uh, you know, kind of keeping his work you know, alive by publishing it with Arkham Press, uh, and now, you know, the new series of books that have been coming out, uh, you know, he, he would have been long forgotten. Um, so, you know, I'm, I have to say that I owe a huge debt to him, and so does everybody here at this festival.